total confirmed deaths by country. So that basically says that China started hitting a peak, but look at the rest, just following suit. Now, if you double every two days, you're on this Spanish line. God help them. That's terrible. They're really very bad off. If you double every uh, three days, you start looking more like the United States. And then if you double um, every 10 days or a week, you're like uh, Japan. South Korea is a little better, like every seven days. Australia's not looking bad, actually. Australia's not looking bad. They're, the, basically, you want this line to be as flat as possible. So um, that's that data source. And then this is the number of confirmed deaths over time. Uh, daily deaths in China. And then look at Italy. Jesus. Yeah. Um, South Korea seems like it's doing a little better. Um, all right. So that's that one. Now, uh, I want to look at the hospital capacity uh, in the U.S. Uh, based on the latest models versus the infection rate. So this is why I also should say it is a little strange that we don't have a federal requirement for all states to go on a 30-day lockdown. Obviously, the economic impact would be crazy, but let me show you why we need to take this ultra serious. So let's start with the worst case scenario, which is uh, New York. Okay. So here's New York. Now they have a stay at home policy, which is smart. You know why? Because this dotted line is their hospital bed capacity. So New York has a total hospital bed capacity of about 40, 43,000. Uh, 43, uh, you will often hear Trump and the task force talk about the Mercy, the Navy medical ship, and then there's one more, I think, Hope. Each of those ships can hold a 1,000, uh, have a 1,000 hospital beds. Now, New York has 43,000. That's this black line. And this is where we are today. Now, these colored lines represent how many hospital beds they may need, how many hospitalizations they may need, depending on how fast this thing spreads. So the worst case scenario is if they do limited action and they just say, hey, this is just like the flu, the cure shouldn't be worse than the disease, okay? You could end up by April 29th if Cuomo didn't do anything and just said, everybody do whatever you want. You could have 333,000 hospitalizations for 43,000 hospital beds. So you would basically overload the uh, hospital capacity probably around April 8th. So obviously, now luckily, New York is not in the red situation. They have uh, done a, a stay at home. Um, order. And if they have very good compliance, there'll be this light green line. If they have bad compliance, there'll be this dark green area. In both cases, New York is projected to, even if they have good compliance, strict compliance, this light green, they will have double the number of hospitalizations they need compared to the number of hospital beds they have. The only other option they have is a complete lockdown where like, you know, like China style, where they won't let you 
uh, go to your office unless you like get the temperature check and they have like enforced lockdowns. And that is not the American way. But if you did that, you'd have uh, a peak of 53,000, 52,000 uh, hospitalizations versus the 43,000 beds. So you'd get closer to what you have. But that's New York. New York is the worst case scenario. If you look at California, they have a stay-at-home order statewide. And California is looking okay. If everybody plays by the rules and does three months, okay, three months of stay-at-home, the green line never exceeds the dotted black line. So they have about 50 9,000 beds. At the worst, they may need 24,000. So they would fill up half of the hospitals with just COVID patients. Um, But that's not, they can handle that. Now, if they do stay at home and people don't comply well, they could get a peak of 226,000 hospitalizations in California versus the 58,000 beds they have. So, um, and then if they did nothing, they would be totally hosed. They would have uh, almost 700,000 hospitalizations on May 11th compared to 58,000 beds. So they'd need 10 uh, beds for every, 10 additional beds for every current bed they have, or yeah, 12 to be to be uh, more precise. So that's California. Now, if you look at Louisiana, I know some people were talking about Louisiana in the, um, in the chat. So Louisiana today is has a stay-at-home order and if if they get good compliance they can stay under the black dotted line. If they have bad compliance they could be 26,000 versus 12,000 so a 2 to 1 ratio. And then I wonder if you can go um New Orleans. I wonder if Orleans Parish is the same as New Orleans. Hope so. Okay. Orleans Parish, Louisiana, even if they do the stay at home, uh, if they have poor compliance, they will run out of hospital capacity in about two and a half weeks. And if they have good compliance, they'll just hit full capacity by middle of May. And then I wonder if we can do New York City. New York. No. Hmm. I wonder what New York County is. Yeah, I think this is New York City. Okay, they're screwed. Look at this. Oh, my God. Because look at this, even, you know, they got the 19,000 beds. They do a total Chinese style lockdown. They're still going to need 29,000 beds. They do stay at home, good compliance. They're going to need 39,000 beds. They do stay at home, bad compliance. They're going to need 60,000 beds, but they only have 19,000. And you will expect to see, if this model is right, you will expect to see some crazy New York uh, City uh, capacity, uh, basically overloading of the hospitals by April 6th, so in about a week. Now, Seattle, where I used to live, uh, was one of the early ones that were hit. They might just barely make it if they keep their good compliance of stay at home for the next three months. They would hit their worst part in uh, early June. And then if you look at San Francisco. San Francisco is actually California is in pretty good shape. I think they will be rewarded for their early lockdown. Uh, Any other states that you guys are curious about uh, before I move on? So I saw someone was asking about South Carolina. I'll take a look at South Carolina. Then if you have other states, we can take a look. 
South Carolina. So they have a social distancing. They are not doing a stay at home. So likely, if they do social distancing, they will run out of hospital capacity on May 23rd. That's this orange line. So they probably, if you believe these numbers, should be uh, doing stay at home. Because the social distancing is not enough. It's going to exceed. The social distancing at some point will hit 30,000 hospitalizations when South Carolina only has 10,000 beds. So South Carolina should probably, by May 14th, declare stay at home. Because if you don't, and you keep on your social distancing thing, you're going to be this orange line and you're going to be hosed. And the problem is like, you can't, you can't go back in time. Once you pass this line, all hell breaks loose because then now what about all the people who need hospitalization, who don't even have COVID, just normal people that need to go to the hospital. It'll be overrun. So I'm not sure what the strategy is for the South, uh, Folks in South Carolina, what's this? South Dakota, right now, uh, doesn't look like maybe they don't have any any orders. But basically, they will get overloaded by uh, in a few weeks because I don't think they they may not have anything going on. They might be able to get away with social distancing. That's what I would do. I would at least do social distancing. Um, that's South Dakota for you. So, and Tejas. Okay. Tejas, uh, probably has social distancing as well, which will be fine for them until May 30th. And that's when they will run out of hospitals. So, you know, basically this is where I would say, it seems to me like the president should uh, take some action. Oh, Jesse Prescott, you're looking for Georgia. Hold on. Uh, and you guys want a link? Let me give you. It's covidactnow.org, but I'll send the link. But well, let's take a look at Georgia for, for old Jesse. Georgia. Hey, Georgia, you should be staying at home, Jesse. I hope you're staying at home. In which case, you're great. Look at that. Beautiful. You stay at home and you comply, you'll be under the dotted line. You do not comply, you're going to be hosed around May 15th. So you don't want to be stay-at-home poor compliance. You want to be stay-at-home good compliance. And then if you did nothing, you would have already been hosed in about a few weeks. So kudos to uh, Georgia for issuing a stay-at-home order. So who, if anybody is in South Carolina, Alabama, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, like you better call your governor, man, or hope that the president just issues a federal stay at home order. The rest of the country is staying at home. So I'm not sure what these orange and red states are thinking, but like it's probably not a good idea to have uh, for for South Dakota, not a good idea to need 14,800 hospitalizations and only have 3,000 beds. Like that's not cool. 